A lot of you guys have been asking me to rank all the villain sets, and originally I was like, no, I'm not going to, because there's over 60 sets to rank, and I really did not want to do that. But, because you all kept insisting, I decided I was going to sit down and rank every single one of these villain sets. But, I'm going to be splitting this into three parts, because otherwise this video would be well over an hour. So today, I will only go up to rank 40. Before we begin, there's a couple rules I'm going to go over. First off, is that price is not going to matter. This is because there's a lot of side builds that I'm going to be including from larger sets, so it wouldn't be fair to include price. Secondly, not all side builds will be counted. If the side build is a significant enough build to the set, it will be included. But if it's just some small, insignificant, forgettable thing, I'm going to exclude it. I'm also going to be excluding temples from this list, but things like fortresses or outposts will be fair game. Lastly, polybags, minifigure packs, junior sets, spinners, or anything else that isn't a standard Ninjago set or part of one will not be included on this list. I was really on the verge about whether or not I would include Chen's dino chair on the list, but I decided that I would go ahead and include it. Now I'm not going to outright say this thing is bad or anything, but it does look a bit strange. My brother and I both agreed that the biggest downfall about this is Chen's chair, which looks very awkward and feels way too big for the mech. That's not to say that the chair doesn't make sense to include. After all, this is Chen we are talking about. But, at the end of the day, this is a set that had a lot of potential, but it unfortunately wasn't really realized because it was designed to be a side build more than an actual set. Design-wise, I think Overborg's bike is a decent enough bike that has enough extra stuff to it that makes it stand out within the horde of Ninjago bikes we have received. But I personally found that the functions of it didn't work so well. The treads that are used are not a good piece, and I found were always difficult to move. Plus, I had trouble getting both the blades to move while moving the bike around. A lot of the time, one would move really well and the other would barely move or not move at all. It's unfortunate because it has potential to be at least near the middle of my list if either one of these two problems did not exist. Garmatron is another set that suffers from these terrible tread pieces, but that's not my only issue with this set. First off, I think it looks dumb. There's a giant hole in the middle for the spring-loaded shooter that does not look good at all. Additionally, the back of this thing is absolutely hideous. There are some cool things about this, like the cage, and the stickers are very nice additions that help add detail. Although they are stickers, but I don't think that features like that are able to help elevate this. There's nothing particularly wrong with this mech. It's a pretty standard Evo mech, although the designers did get a little creative with the torso of this. Otherwise, there's nothing really to talk about with this. You'll get the same experience with this as you would with any of the other Evo Max. The Vermilion bike is about as average as a Ninjago bike can get. There isn't really anything about this that stands out to me. It uses the treads that I already mentioned I don't like, albeit it doesn't use very many of them. It's also just a really small bike build that doesn't have anything extra about it. If you've been following the channel for a while, and let's be real, you probably haven't, but if you have, you'd know that I do not like the Oni Titan. I think this is the ugliest Ninjago set to ever be released. I can't stand the olive and dark blue, and while some people will be like, oh, it gives it this earthy look, I don't care. I wish they replaced these pieces with trans purple, or at least whatever purple they used for the eyes. But here's the thing. I'm not the only person who doesn't like this set, because back in 2018 when this set came out, I asked my mom what she thought about this set. And here's what she had to say. Um, Other opinions? The colors aren't really astounding. <laughs> it looks like baby poop green. The gray is okay, but again, baby poop green. <laughs> so, not overly impressed. See, even my mom doesn't care for the Oni Titan. But, function-wise, this set is good. So even though I think it's absolutely hideous, I'm not placing it at last because it is a good set to play with. The Venomari Shrine is only this high up because it looks really good and that's kind of important for a generic structure set. The problem is that the function apparently does not work very well, at least according to my brother. It's really unfortunate because if the function worked well, it 
definitely have been higher on this list. I wouldn't say any of the Ninjago helicopters that have been made are bad, but I think this is the worst of them all. The orange snake dude helicopter looks fine, but doesn't offer anything we haven't seen before. The only function is the spinning blades. Couple that with a weak color scheme of orange and teal, and I just don't have a lot of love for this one. The Dragon Hunter helicopter is just like the Orange Snake helicopter, except this one came first and it's a bit better. I don't think that it necessarily looks better, but it's definitely better to play with. In addition to the standard blade spinning function, it has blades that can spin on the back and a stud shooter to fire. Lloyd's Journey is a dumb name for a set that should be called Ice Warrior Fortress or something like that, but hey, Lloyd's name is going to make this set so, well, so let's call it that. In all seriousness, this is a nice small little fortress that looks good and has a crossbow in the front that you can aim and fire. Plus, some parts of it are on hinges, so you can move them around a little bit. If you don't know, I hold all the Ninjago Movie Ninja vehicles very highly, with all of them placing very high on my ranking the Ninja sets lists. The same cannot be said with the villain sets, and the first one to appear on this list is the Piranha Attack. The biggest downfall of this set is that the legs are forever fixed in place. Its play features include glorified flick fire missiles and the ability to eat a ninja. Its look is also a bit strange to me. I'm not sure if I could describe it as either good or bad. I haven't had this built in a long time, but I swear when I was a kid, the front of the skull helicopter actually looked like a skull, but now I just think it looks bad. Luckily, the features definitely make up for that. It has the generic standard features we have seen in all the other helicopters, blades that you can spin around, plus flick fire missiles. However, it also has this claw that can be moved up and down to capture one of the ninja, or you can use it to drop down a skeleton into battle. When I think of the flying jelly sub, I think about that really cool side build boat that came in it, and then I think about the jelly sub. The sub is designed pretty well and looks good, but it also feels really small and has no standout features. It's nice that you can rotate the sub around, but when there's no stud shooters or flick fire missiles, that doesn't really add much to the set. This is another average Ninjago bike, although this one is a bit larger. While yes, the Warrior bike does have those lame treads I don't really like in the front, those are offset by two giant wheels in the back. I actually have a legendary review on this set where I further discuss my thoughts on it. This is awesome. But here's what you need to know. It has a function that fires flick fire missiles similar to the one in the side build from Jay's Titan Mech, but it works better. The Empress Mech is a really good looking mech with some nice features, but it also has some flaws. I'll start off with the nice features, which include knee articulation and a clip for the Empress Beatrix sword. But some of the flaws include the sword being a little too heavy for the mech. Plus, the feet are designed a little strange, with the back half being a little higher up than the front half. It's somewhat unnecessary and makes it difficult to stand, but not impossible, and not nearly as bad as the Legacy Golden Dragon. I've always thought of Knuckles ATV as one of the weakest skeleton vehicles. I used to not like this because the beams looked super exposed, but as I've become older, I've begun to appreciate the design a little more. The standout feature is the suspension, which is a feature I will always love, plus I think the giant spring-loaded shooter actually looks okay even though it is a bit exposed. The Vermilion Attack is the last of these small fortress sets, and I think it's far and away the best one. First off, the small build looks very good. Additionally, the function is really nice. I just really enjoy the simplicity of opening up the Vermilion Egg and unleashing a ton of snakes. Plus, they have a lever for the function on the back, so it doesn't take away from the look of the front. SOG headquarters will always be one of those store-exclusive spinner sets to me, although this time it wasn't a store-exclusive. It's got a lot of nice functions to it that are supposed to be used against the Lloyd spinner, but honestly, it works fine without using them against the spinner. It also has the ability to be opened, up, or closed in, depending on how you want to display it. The thing I hated about this was how easy it was to knock off the Oni Mask of Hatred. See what I did there? Otherwise, this is a fine set. The Destructoid is a set I look at and think, what is this? But when I get into what it offers, I begin to like it a bit more. First off, it has the dumb treads I dislike and makes sets hard to move, although when you are moving it, there are blades that will move up and down with it. 
The top of this is basically a mech with this saw that can be spun around with the gear and also extended outward, along with another arm that carries a sword. It also has the ability to fire out discs in the front and it has plenty of room for minifigures. It's a really unique set with a lot of play features. I give a lot of flack to the original Ultra Dragon, and deservedly so, but the Great Devourer, which also came in the same set, is a solid build. It has pretty much everything you need, articulation throughout the snake, plus the ability to eat woo and trap him in there forever. Only complaint I can think of is the lack of articulation in the head, but I don't think it's that big of a deal because the eating feature is really nice and worth the sacrifice. The Hover Hunter is a very solid set. For being as small as it is, it really offers a lot. While it does have some standard flick fire missiles, the star feature is the fact that the saw rotates when moving the vehicle. While we have seen this feature in other Ninjago sets, this was the first time we saw this, and it's really a nice feature to have, especially in something at this scale. The giant stone army warrior is basically just a giant minifigure that is awesome to have. The head is really nice and doesn't look awkward like some other large scale minifigures, and the forearms have solid articulation. It does a really solid job at being a giant stone army warrior minifigure, which is all it needs to be. Mm.